Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at, well, not at Justin's Fish Room, but we're in the wilderness of Australia, in Brisbane, and uh, today we're going to do a video where we'll be trapping some, some fish. So as you guys know, um, I've got some Oscar cichlids, and they are extremely hung hungry fish. I really underestimated how much food they eat and how many water changes I need to keep them uh, growing nicely, and I'll show you them when we get back to the fish room. But today we're going to get some fish for them to eat. So I'm not going to be feeding them any native fish from here. They'll only be eating um, fish that are like live berries, which are the invasive fish from South America and um, Central America, like the gambusia. Um, and yeah, so we will keep some rainbow fish. There's a bagging limit of 20 across all the species. And um, if there's anything else cool, we'll have a look and see what the bagging limit for those are. But yeah, it's going to be an overall pretty good video. And if you haven't done so already, please join the family and, and subscribe. And yeah, let's get into it. Right, so here we have a pretty center trap. My, one of my really good friends, Joel, um, has lent this to me. Uh, because he had Oscars as well. And he used to feed them heaps of fish just to keep up with their hungry habits. Um, I have a big bucket here, it's a 20 litre bucket I think, a 30 litre, and then I've got some uh, crust bread with some veggie mite on it. Apparently that works really well. So I'm actually not going to put it in this little pouch here meant for the bait because um, this is my friend's trap and I don't want to give it back to him with all this weird bread in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this main part and just place it in there. I might break it up a little bit. I'm going to close this up and then I have a rope attached to this. Um, the worst comes to worst and this rope comes undone, I'm going to go for a swim. But hopefully that doesn't happen. And then, oh, I'll try to just put this as far into the middle as possible. So, you see how this goes. And then I'm just going to secure this down with a rock or something. Um, I'm just going to go up. And that's it. Ah, dog! No, hey, Justin. Film. Justin, chill. <laughs> Do you mind? You know, this is all going on. I want to come up with my food. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. We've been having a look, we've been going around, that's my dad, everyone, dad say hi. Hi. <laughs> and um, the creek here is really beautiful, it's really healthy. There's a lot of shrimp, like glass shrimp and that sort of thing, which means, um, if you're hearing slaps and stuff, it's actually my dad getting attacked by mosquitoes, so don't mind him. Um, but yeah, this creek is very, very healthy. And uh, there's glass shrimp in here, which is a good indicator that the, the ecosystem is really healthy. We've seen a heap of swordtails, unfortunately. They're from Central America, so they're invasive here and they outcompete with all the native fish. So, um, yeah, the fact that they're here is not a great thing. There's a heap of gambusia. That's pretty much the most common live bearing fish in Australian creeks, which is also from America. So, not great, but we've seen a heap of native fish. So, firetail gudgeons, empire gudgeons, uh, we've seen quite a few of those. There's purple spotted gudgeons in here. Um, rainbow fish. So we've got two types of rainbow fish, apparently. We have the eastern rainbow fish and the crimson spotted rainbow fish. Um, we do get the ornate rainbow fish in this part of uh, Queensland, but I think it's more coastal. So I don't think we're going to see any of those here. They're increasingly rare. So. If you like these sort of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And also let me know in the comments down below whether you want to see more videos like this. Um, I'm going to be posting um, videos like this anyways in the future. I'm going to go out with some friends eventually and we're going to go to Gold Coast. We're going to go up to Sunshine Coast and we're going to go and see what's in the rivers there. So 
it's a new little hobby, um, sub hobby in this in this fish hobby that I really am enjoying, and yeah, it's really cool. So um, it's nearly time to go check out the the trap. So I'll see you guys there. I don't know if you can see, but in the middle of the screen there, there's a big rainbow just sitting under the surface of the water. And um, there's a few other ones. That's a beautiful male there. He's got nice red on his fins. You can see a few swimming behind him. So pretty sure those are crimson spotted rainbows, but they could very well be um, the eastern. But there's only one way to find out. So we'll have to, we'll have to catch a few and see what they look like. So we're going to go pull in the trap now and um, yeah. Alright, so I'm going to pull in the trap. Yeah, we've caught quite a few fish. Um, so we'll just have to have a look and see what we've got. Oh, that's really cool. So you can see here, we actually have an empire gudgeon. And I'll have to show you later, but you can kind of see the red on his fins. And the white. Oh, that's it, buddy. We'll get these into the bucket quickly, and then I'll show you. This is a sawtail. They're very beautiful fish, but unfortunately they're very invasive. So that'll be fed to our fish, um, uh, well, both our fish, Winston and Willow, which you guys named. So I'm not going to take all these fish, but I'm going to get them in the water so we can just choose which ones we're going to take. It's important to not take more than you kind of need for your fish tank. Because um, you've got to remember that native fish are important in the ecosystem. Um, and taking too many out of the, the natural environment is not good. It's not sustainable. Which is why we have regulations here in Australia. So I'm going to put that aside for now. And I'm just going to show you what we've got. Alright, so as you can see, we've got a really, really stunning fish here. This, you can see, has a really nice black colour on his fins. What you probably can't see is the red colouring. Um, so this is a typical male uh, empire gudgeon. So he's going to make a great addition to the tank. There's heaps of empire gudgeons in here, so we'll probably just keep two of them. Um, two or three, maybe a female as well. And um, release the rest. This guy... Oh, as I showed you before, oh yeah, so this is a rainbow, looks like maybe a female rainbow, not too sure, but um, we've got two rainbows there, so yeah, we'll take that one home, and then I'll show you, see if I can get them again, so these guys, if you do catch these for, for bait, the important thing to make sure of is, if you catch them, it's better to let your um, local fisheries know about your catch and to also let them know of the size because um, they collect that data and they can use it for um, for research and that sort of thing so they're a beautiful fish unfortunately they're just very very invasive all right so we're going to catch a few more fish i'm going to release a heap of these and um and yeah we'll see we need to catch some more rainbows i think to get a good school in the riverine tank so let's put this trap back out and we'll see what we can catch Alright, so we're staying by the trap, and I don't know if you can see, it's not the best footage, but there's heaps of rainbow fish surrounding the trap. And I'm just hoping some of them are going in and haven't worked out that they can eat the bread from the outside. But we're just kind of like hiding in this grass stuff, and you can just see some really big rainbows. So hopefully, we don't end up with only two rainbows. Um, we can get a few more so we can have a school. Um, school of them in the riverine tank that'd be really right, so cool another thing to um, make a note of this is my mate's trap so I don't have a tag in my trap um, but we're staying with the trap the whole time while we're here so um, basically what that is is usually if you're leaving a trap there for 20 minutes half an hour however long you make sure 
you put a label on it with your name and your address and your phone number, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's just what I've been told is the, is the rule. So just make sure you guys do that if you do decide to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in and hopefully we've caught some rainbow fish. Right, so we have caught some rainbow fish, so I'm just gonna go get the bucket. Right, so these rainbows are a bit smarter than we thought. Um, we've caught two, so one male and one female. And no doubt the male's in there because a female went in, and they're beautiful blue color. Just absolutely stunning, with orange dots on them, so they're really beautiful fish. So we'll put them in the bucket. And we'll get the female out now. So these fish love current, so even in this trap, um, I left them in the water there, they um, swim right in the front of the trap where the um, current is. So. so there's no other ones in here, so this isn't a great spot to catch rainbows. So now we've got four rainbow fish. We're going to go over there, put the trap back there because that's where we had the mo most success. Let's go ahead and do that now. And then the rest of these, I'm gonna release because they're all um, they're all empire gudgeons. So I'm gonna release them back. All right, cool. Alrighty, guys. So um, number one thing is uh, with when you catch fish like this is to make sure you quarantine them. I'm lucky I've got a nice big square tank at the top of my rack system that's used as a quarantine. It's got uh, five grams per liter of salt in it and Melfix, and we're gonna do a worm treatment as well. So making sure that these guys are nice and clean before they go into one of our fish tanks. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in a couple days and I'll go ahead and do that. Now. All right, so we're here, the fish are acclimated. Um, it's the morning, so they'll have the whole day um, just to kind of get used to their new tank. There's some fish in here already. Um, and they seem to be doing great. So I've got a jug full of the fish that we're gonna put in. Um, and they're all looking really healthy, look, looking really good. So we'll see what they look like. All right, so temperature's the same. It's now just a matter of getting them in. And look at how beautiful they are. These, there's like one that's really stripy. I don't know if it's the same species or not. If you guys know the answer to that, just let me know. You can see we have some really beautiful fish. Look, our empire gudgeons there. And these guys are just very, very colorful. So I'll just let them go in. Look at that guy, he's really, really orange, orangey yellow. That's very, very cool. So you can see the empire gudgeon here. Um, and you can imagine how colorful this guy will get when he's fully um, in breeding mode. But yeah, these, there's a few of these which have stripes, um, which don't seem like the normal crimson spot rainbows. So I wonder if it's a different subspecies, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, if you guys know the answer to that, please let me know. But this guy is really stunning. It's almost like a yellow, um, a yellow, he's got red on his tail a little bit, a little bit of red on his dorsal fin, but yeah, his, his anal fin is really yellow. But yeah, I really like this guy. Hopefully he colors up a little bit more. But um, yeah, I'll show you a video of them once they're all settled in. Um, yeah, I think I'll turn off the lights and that sort of thing just to keep them calm. And, I'll show you probably in a couple hours. All right, so they're now settled in. You can see that male is still very, very beautiful. And there's a few here that have stripes. And I'm really, really curious about that. That's just, it's so interesting how they are stripy, some of them, and some of them are not. So it um, be interesting to see what you guys say. As you can see, I have some glass shrimp. They've actually got eggs um, in the tank. 
the thinking behind that is having a heap of shrimp um, that will reproduce in this tank will also provide food for baby rainbows. I've kind of put a little area there full of um, java moss. That's kind of the stuff that they like to spawn in apparently. So overall the tank, sorry for the reflection, the tank is looking pretty good. Um, I'm happy with it. I don't know if I'll put many more plants in here, but yeah, I'm very happy with, with the rainbows and I'll let you know progress going forward with these guys. Might even try to breed them. Um, yeah. Let me know if you guys like this. Make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't done so already. Uh, become a part of the JFR community. I had a look at the uh, YouTube analytics and apparently 80% of my viewers aren't actually subscribed. So um, if you guys could do that, that would mean the world to me and it would make such a difference. So please make sure you subscribe if you watch these videos often. Um, it just It's a bit of support for, for the creators. So yeah, I really appreciate that. All right, guys, so I will see you in the next video and I hope you have a great week coming up and happy fish keeping. See you, everyone.